been offered in public health for a long time now, and there's not very many times that you get to do, to do something that's pleasurable because a lot of times we have to tell people stuff they don't want to hear. But back in the spring, we called a friend of ours, Bruce Tarr, a state senator, and uh, asked him to, uh, he, knows, he knows Albert Goulthorpe, and we asked him if he would get us a certificate from the Senate, uh, thanking her for her 20 years of <coughs> service to the Board of Health in Newbury. And it's an official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Alba Goulthorpe, Town of Newbury Board of Health, in recognition of your 20 years of dedicated and committed service to the town of Newbury. Be it further known that Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, that the citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the clerk of the Senate, signed by the Senate President Karen Spilka, um, by the Senate clerk Michael Hurley, <coughs> and by our Senator Bruce Tarr, dated May 19th, 2022. And uh, Albert and Elaine and I were uh, the first Board of Health that was ever elected uh, by the town, it was separate from the uh, Board of Selectmen. And uh, it, was, it was an interesting time, the transition and all that. But I wanna personally thank Alba for everything she did for all those years. And Elaine? Yes. My name is Elaine Byrne. I'm sure that most of you do know me. And um, of course, I know Alba, and I want to make sure that um, I thank Alba for all the years and probably all the flack that she took because I was away at work and she was a sitting duck many times. <laughs> um, and she took a lot of, a lot of um, flack to, to use a nice word. I, I would like to use a different word, but... Um, <laughs> She took it, and it wasn't fair, really, and because uh, we were just doing our job, and I, I just feel that she didn't get, she didn't get the, um, she didn't get the awards or the respect that she should have got for all of the work that she did, and I want to make sure that people do recognize that, and give her her due. Thank you. And then, I'm a little prejudiced in this regard, but I think we have the best health department staff in the state, <laughs> Deb and Ginger, and our health director, Deb, is gonna come up and have a couple words to say. Yes, yes. Um, on behalf of myself and Ginger, we want to thank you for all the almost 20 years that we worked together with you. Um, I remember when we first met 22 years ago, um, I was at my other, at the other town I worked for, and Alba was at the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards getting certified as a health board member for the state of Massachusetts. And f since the day I met her, she's always taken the Board of Health job very seriously. She was there for us anytime, all the time. And, um, we, it was a privilege to work for you for the last 20 years. So uh, thank you from all of us. <laughs> and I'm not long-winded, so now I'll turn it over and thank the Board of Selectmen for having this dual meeting. <laughs> thank you, Steve. entertain a motion to open wait, wait, wait. so, so move. maybe she wants to speak, wants to speak. Oh, do you want to speak Alba now or yes, I to speak. okay I'm the kid 
She's the oldest daughter of the oldest daughter of the oldest daughter. Oh, my. She's all the way here from Delaware. Oh. Here's Aww. my from Palm Island, and I'm Alba Goldthorpe. And I think this is a little bit backwards because I was honored to take be, you, be with you as a mother and guardian and everything to everybody. And I think you deserve all the things that I just got, not me. Because no. I had pleasure. No, with no, no. So, <laughs> really, really appreciate all that you've done for me, for the people that, you know, it, it, they appreciated having us. They really, really did, because it was quite a transition. Is that cord? No, no kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just about to do it anyway. Yeah. You know, I always oh. felt that that was my life. That, you know, I, I didn't believe God. I believed the Board of Health. Yeah. And that's my, my life. And my uh, kids will tell you, many is the night that they left. Mama was eating dinner and hurry up, go to, you know, we gotta get out of here. Get, I missed one meeting in 20 years and that was my husband, my, the night my husband passed away. Oh. So I thought that was a pretty good record, but you people all made it very, very you know, good for me to be here. He'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I got in and out of a lot of trouble, but God took care of me and you people took care of me. So thank you all for everything. And I really think that all these nice things are for you folks instead of for me because it was a pleasure. It really, I feel lost in not having something to do at night. Imagine going to bed at 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> 7.30 at 88 years old, that's unheard of. <laughs> but when I wake up at 3.30, I'll say, geez, I better step in the bed later. <laughs> So thank you all for everything. God bless you. Thank Entertain a motion to open. Motion to open. Second. All in favor? Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to piggyback on what the chair of the Board of Health has just said, that uh, Board of Health member Alba Goldthorpe has duly served the town of Newberry. Um, and the town of Newberry thanks you for your 20 years of dedicated service. We sincerely appreciate your con contributions. And I'm going to echo what Elaine said. You do not have an easy job. Your board is probably one of the most difficult. I feel it could be even more difficult than this board. Um, you have a, um, you deal with hot fire topics and you have deal with some angry residents and, and you did it. You did it well for 20 years and you came back. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's public service that is rare today. Um, public service is difficult. Uh, in this p political environment especially, it's even more difficult. And you did it, and you can, you know, hold your head up high and put your pillow at night and feel very, very proud. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. You're welcome. And that's a little plaque. And I'm, actually, I'm going to ask Select Board Member Jeff if you'd like to say something to Alba while we're here. Alba. I appreciate everything you've done for our town. <laughs> and, I, and you've been at it a long time, as I have. And I can remember all those evenings and all those times. And you've done a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Jerry, would you like to say two words? Okay. Just thank you very much for your service. I, Albert, I just want to say, um, you know, obviously, to all the years you dealt with a very difficult job. Thank you so much. And. Uh, when I was new on the job, I always enjoyed talking to you because you'd always shoot me straight. <laughs> there, there was, it was never... You know, always love me because whatever <laughs> Right. Well, I, I really appreciate so you. Maybe people don't like me because I 
I tell the truth all the time. And the older I get, I'm finding out that you know what? Being 88 is wonderful. You don't have to hurry in the morning. You go to bed when you feel like it. Just like a baby. When you wake up in the morning, you want to eat, you go and eat. When you want to take a nap, you take a nap. That's like stuff I watch out of my way. Right, right. Well, thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, before we move to public comment, I do want to uh, ask for a moment of silence. Um, this week we lost Alec Mc Alex McCardo. She was a former Council on Aging director. She was instrumental in getting the first location for the Council on Aging at NES. Um, she, was uh, she was a longtime supporter of uh, our seniors in the town of Newbury and she was instrumental in growing pro programming. She was, I believe she was still active up until um, very recently. So I just like a moment of silence for her. Thank you. Alicia, Alex was, was quite a woman too. I can remember when my mother would go down and she got to be on in years, and Alex was always one of the people that kept the council and aging very strong. And if there was any hiatuses or any times that things would fall, to Alex was right there, and was amazing and did a great job. Great. Um, so I'm just gonna go right down the agenda. Do we have any public comment tonight? Being none, I'm going to move to board and committee reports. I signed the PR 2304 for Julie O'Brien, the 2305 for Julie, the 2305 for the select board, and the 2306 for Julie O'Brien. Um, we have some grants, gifts, and donations. Uh, the Council on Aging donation for the Friends of the, Count of the Newbury Council on Aging for $2,500. Motion to accept. Second. Okay, any discussion? There's a notice in here that it's going to be for um, furniture that's going to go down to downstairs, Kent, Kent Way. So we're very thankful for the friends. Um, it's actually quite, um, a, quite a bit of furniture. It's good. Yeah, a lot they, of they, they've really helped out. Yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have a Council on Aging donation from Susan Ricker for $25. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> we have a public hearing at 7.15, so I'm going to pass over that and come back at 7.15. Um, the Pink House, we had, did have a select board training session scheduled for this, this evening, which we're going to be rescheduling. Um, Selectman Packer could not attend tonight, so as the newest uh, board member he, he wanted to really attend so we're going to reschedule it for him excuse me may yes. i inquire what is the the topic of this session she's going to cover the sunshine laws open meeting laws conflict of interest she is the town the town council town council be covering uh i asked her that today this the sunshine laws public records laws <coughs> open meeting laws um conflict of interest town administrative form of government she does it pretty much every yeah. year. Oh. Yep. So, um, the pink house preservation restriction discussion. Now, we're, we're starting kind of early, so I don't know if people are here. Oh, you're here, good, come on up. <laughs> I'm dying to hear what you have to say. <laughs> super excited. Hi, I'm super excited. So this is Rochelle Josephs. So why don't you explain to the peeps who and, you are. And you've been at this yep. a while. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes, I'm Rochelle Joseph. I'm the uh, Steamed Up Glasses president of um, Support the Pink House. Uh, 
uh, Inc. And um, we've got some board members here. Kelly Page is our, our clerk. Um, and uh, we're here to, uh, we're, we're on the very last step um, to save and preserve the Pink House for our town and for the region. Bravo. Community, thank you so much. Um, about seven years ago, the uh, Fish and Wildlife came up in a newspaper article that they were thinking of demolishing the house and there was such a large community reaction that uh, they kind of explored some things with uh, the community and it kind of dwindled down to a little group. And uh, it, uh, it turned out that that became Support the Pink House kind of formed in answer to this uh, <coughs> mission that kind of created itself. So that was seven years ago. And uh, we have done this work on behalf of the community. And um, in that time, the Pink House has grown to actually become globally recognized, but certainly nationally. And it's seen as, a, you may know all this, but it's, it's seen as a um, identifier to our area. That silhouette, you know where you are. And to New England and the region, not just our town. So in, uh, we have uh, followed a couple solutions to their natural end. Um, and come so close, heartbreakingly close a few times. Uh, for the last two and a half years, we have been in partnership with the Fish and Wildlife. Uh, we, we've always worked in partnership with them, but we did sign a new contract together that we would concurrently work on a land swap. And in order to find out if the house could be, um, you know, have its own lot made and all of that to be ready for swap, we had to go through in the last two years a variety of steps. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that was part of our mission is to attach a uh, preservation restriction mm -hmm. uh, so that it can never be torn down, always stay pink, be that same silhouette, not developed into something, not made into a McMansion, you know, not turned into a bunch of condos or a, a store. So, I mean, you know, like a, a shopping center. So that is to preserve what the house is that everyone remembers and wants to have as the marker. So this is our last step and we're here. And um, we went, so, so the way that this went is we composed a preservation restriction with Eric Dre, who's very well-known consultants. Um, we, uh, once we got that readied with uh, our various preservation experts, we went to town council, Lisa Mead, got her approval of that, worked together with her. We took that to the Newberry Historic Commission, which we've been meeting with along the way since the beginning. They voted to hold and enforce that. Once we had that, we then took it to Mass Historic. And I have to say, they have bent over backwards to rush this through. They're six months behind on everything. They, Michael Steinitz, who is head there of this division, said, I will personally turn this around in 30 days. Um, they know of the project. They love it and support it, which was wonderful to us. Um, so they returned, they looked it over and returned it with some very minor tweaks like capitalize this letter or whatever. But I'd like to read you just this short paragraph that they said, which we found extremely exciting. The Pink House, Plum, 60 Plum Island Turnpike Newberry is included in the inventory of historic and archeological assets of the Commonwealth, is significant for its architecture, associations and or archeology span and qualifies for the protections of a perpetual preservation restriction under chapter, et cetera. So they uh, <clears throat> asked us for some tweaks. We put them in all but one, the deed from the US Fish and Wildlife. They're working on that and that's the only part we're waiting for. But I went back to Michael Steinitz and said, um, would you be willing to review all the rest and approve that? And they said, absolutely. So, we have got a 99% approved preservation restriction in hand. Um, and uh, it did go back to Lisa's office and she has looked it over and said everything is fine. So the only thing left to do is to get that um, deed, which I, I spoke to Fish and Wildlife Friday. They said two to three weeks. Michael Stein had said, we will turn that around for you in two to three days. Then we would, would like to have that meeting with the Historic Commission to finally vote and sign for the select board to vote and sign notarized and we are ready to do the trade. So um, we're very excited. We've worked <laughs> a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's, is there, can I answer any questions? Jerry. Um, who, who is the actual owner of the property now? The U.S. Fish and Wildlife. 
and it was it it, it was the private family that used to live there they they sold it or gave it or yes. donated it Yes, um, and people think it's been abandoned for 30, 40, 50 years. It actually was um, lived in by family after family since 1925. The last family were the Stotts. Um, the, the woman who was there actually did a little bit of a like rental of Plum Islands out of her house, and th the three children who were raised there all still live in the area. Um, but when she was, you know, no longer able to live in the home, uh -huh. uh, it, the, it transferred to her executors. And uh, they did try to market it, but um, at the price they marketed it for, they didn't have buyers at the time. And so at some point there was a conversation of, well, it wouldn't be bad if, if it could go to the conservation. So it is three parcels totaling 9.29 acres. The pink house is on only one of those parcels. It's about a two and some acre. So what we have done with our, um, uh, we did with the uh, ZBA here, is to create its own parcel again working with fish and wildlife because um, all the rest of that land a lot of it is bob colby's mm -hmm. the colby uh, family's land on either side so um, it has been in uh, the ownership of uh, fish and wildlife since september 2011. oh okay okay well. so it, it did get on the plum island you know overlay it, it does have the water and all that that would make it easy to to make a residence again or yeah. or whatever so thank you Jeff? No, oh, great job, Michelle. Thank you, I've Jeff. been aboard for a lot of it. Great, great job. Yes, you have been a big supporter. I appreciate great job. your great job. Do you have any questions? No, no, this time. So what's oh, Tracy? <laughs> so your next step is you're going to go. You're going to get this all these letters back. You're going to go before the historical commission. They need to sign off. Then you'll come before us. And what's going to be our role? You uh, just, well, we, I can give you the preservation restriction the Thursday or whatever before your meeting, so you yeah. can review it. But we'll have it. Um, yeah. And, uh, and uh, then we would just come to another meeting like this, and you'd say, hooray, okay. yes, it's okay with us. And, uh, there, the, uh, you know, so, so there's a process of, uh, that a notary would have to, um, I guess, witness that. We're, we're happy to bring a notary if it's something where it could be signed after the meeting, but I'm not sure how the protocol would go. But basically, it just needs those two committees to vote, sign, and we would sign as well. So, okay. so we can work that out, I guess. Wait, I'm just thinking aloud here. I wonder if it's possible. And I'll have to look at schedules and stuff. If we can have a joint, I don't know if we can do it for a joint meeting well, or if they have to do it for us. So we'll figure, we'll figure out all yeah. those logistics. One, one thought was, would they come to the meeting? And at the very end, everybody could, you know, once you've done your other business, everyone could vote and <coughs> we could have uh, our notary here or a notary. Yeah. Then it could all be done at everyone's convenience. So, um, so what's your plan after? After this, you're going to restore it, right? Yeah, uh, under this preservation restriction, which talks it, yeah, even pinked, uh, picked a pink color, which Kelly worked very hard to get just the right faded. Yes, so one you year have it's to. not Pepto Bismol pink, and the <laughs> yeah. next year it's you know, it's neon. Um, and uh, it, it does it does list, and we worked with the historic commission as well, um, Newbury's historic commission, to uh, make sure that the front three sides would remain as they are the roof line would remain as it is. The back has a lot of, that, that is a later addition of various scrappy things that are f completely falling apart. So within that roughly that same square footage of footprint, <coughs> there would just be a cleaned up section on the back. Um, and that's all been okayed also by Fish and Wildlife and the CONCOM. And uh, so we have a restoration partner who without this, uh, without that person's interest, uh, we probably couldn't have gotten this far. And the intention is either to own it or eventually make it available for someone to own it. And if there were a research, it can it is zoned for research or something. But ho hopefully, the idea is that it would never be teeming with cars or something. That it would be something low impact, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and also that the you know driver would always stay gravel and things yeah. like that. So. Um, and that it would never be blocked from the public eye because this you know, creates so much inspiration for artists, filmmakers, paintings, people write songs about it, write poetry about it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Anyway, so it would always be there as that iconic uh, structure, and, uh, but to have like a bunch of privacy bushes or whatever, um, you know, once someone's living in it, who knows if people will, you know, stop and paint you know but they probably get a little bit of a distance and things but so okay michelle 
beside the tradition and the history and, and the confirmation of the house itself, was it you, Martha, that was telling me that that was a, a traditional foresight or anyway, where four sides, leap, and there's not many of those around in our town, right? It is a four square, and there are not many. Four square, see? I knew it was four square. All right, good. So that's really an added to make sure we protect something like that. That's yeah. great. There's only a very few in Newbury, and um, none of them are as visible. Uh, yep. There's one that's on the best version that's not changed, is on a side street that's kind of hard to see. And then, of course, the cupola makes it extra special. Yep. And its location, iconic. Yes, absolutely. It's it is okay. iconic. It's an iconic mm -hmm. building. And it really enhances the nature around it, I think. So um, I don't know if I should take two seconds to just kind of, uh, this will come to you, but just so you know, there's some basic, <laughs> you know, boilerplate stuff in the front. There are signature pages. And then you will see the Form B, which was the first step that we pursued. We, we were, um, it does show the ANR okay. plan, the division yeah. of the lot, and it does show the um, Form B. There's some photos of the house, and then it gets into the meat of things, which is in the very back, which talks about <clears throat> what can and can't be done. Okay. There's just two pages of it. So that might be when you get it where you'd want to focus. And then there are some drawings of how, how it will look, which is uh, the elevations, they call it. Okay, and all righty. And this only applies to the exterior, not the interior, you know, so um, that's that. Well, well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Michelle. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, we have to declare a surplus of the Center Street flagpole. Motion to declare the Center Street flagpole surplus. Second. Any discussion? Um, oh. I'm not opposed to it. Do we know the history of it? Tracy can give it to you. Um, all we know, I had James um, spend some time out there looking at it, and it's two pieces of pipes that were mm. pipe that was relatively crudely put together. Nobody knows where it came from. There's another flagpole on the site. It hasn't been used. Yeah, this thing's kind of in the back yeah. now, right? Yep. Yep. It doesn't um, have any significant value. He estimated between $25 and $30. So once we declare it surplus, it'll, it'll go to bid. If anybody wants it, they can bid on it. We move on. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, <coughs> we have a one day liquor license for Mercury Brewing Barktoberfest. I'm going to recuse for the next few. Okay. Motion so, to accept the one day liquor oops, license. Okay. At Spencer Pierce Little Farms? Yeah, he's, that's why he's going, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that before you interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one day like a license is Spencer Pierce Little Farm for the Bartumba Fest. Is that a motion? Yep, that is a motion. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Aye. A one day liquor license for Timothy Hopkins Catering LLC for a wedding at Spencer Pierce Little Farm. And I would mimic that one day like a license for the Meadery Minute May, uh, Minute Man Spencer Pierce Little Farm. Do I have a second, Jerry? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, one day liquor license for Bear Wolf Brewery, for another Bachtoberfest, Bachtoberfest, Spencer P.S. Little Farm. Where's that one? Is that the Kansas? That's the third one. After the Hopkins. Okay. Um, motion to declare a one day liquor license for. Um, do I have that? Yeah. Oh, wait, that yeah. one right here, Bear yeah. Wolf Brewery. Yeah, yeah LLC. Second. That's Ben Sapir's little. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And another one day liquor license for Dan Clapp, 1634 Metery Minuteman. Was that the one that you did before the wedding? Julie, what do you have for motions? And what do we approve? He mentioned Minuteman when he was saying part of it. He had part of it Minuteman and part of it. Yeah, that's the one I wedding. read. I didn't see that one. <laughs> I'd give you my glasses, but you'd see worse. I don't, um, need, I don't need That's one yeah. thing I don't need. All right, so what do we need? What do you need? Oh, is the first one, do we have a motion, a second for, for Mercury why, why Brewing? Why don't we just redo, yeah, why don't we just redo the Timothy Hopkins so it's clear? Okay. 
I'll entertain a motion for a one-day liquor license for Timothy Hopkins Catering, LLC, a wedding at Spencer P.S. Little Farm. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. I will entertain a one-day liquor license for Dan Clapp at 1634 Meadery, Minuteman, Spencer P.S. Little Farm. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A one-day liquor license for Decanted Incorporated, bar another bar Barktoberfest. At Spencer P.S. Little Farm? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. A new business license for Lisa, Lisa Schulman doing business JR. as. Oh, yeah, let's get Jaya. I forgot about him. <laughs> okay. We have a new business license for Risa Schulman doing, doing business as Fig Tree Family Medicine, PLLC, at 76 Newburyport Turnpike. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, is Risa here? Come on up. Hi. Why don't you tell us about, you have a new business in town? I hope to. Well, okay. <laughs> well, we're on, we're broadcast on cable TV, so let's. Okay, so um, I am planning to open a what's called a direct primary care practice in Newbury. Um, I'm a primary care doctor. I currently work for Beth Israel in Amesbury. Um, and direct primary care is a model for delivering high quality and low cost primary care to people. Um, and so it's a membership based practice and um, it is free of the uh, constraints of third parties, so there's no insurance that's taken, mm -hmm. um, but the price point is uh, targeted to the average person. Um, it's not like concierge medicine where it's aimed towards more affluent people. So the hope is to basically continue to serve the people of the greater Newburyport area as I've been doing for the last 10 years, but in a different practice model that's uh, more humane <laughs> and accessible <laughs> um, and easy for everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for choosing Newberry. Thank you for being Newberry. <laughs> <laughs> Does the board have any questions? No. Okay. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you. Good luck Good with your new, your new business. Um, I'm going to skip over the um, appointments and move on to. Um, We'll come back to those, to the HR board discussion of, oh, and Mark's not here either. Um, and the capital plan is, Marshall, what time's he coming? He's supposed to be joining, but he hasn't joined the Zoom yet. Okay. Did you open the Zoom? Yeah, it's open. <coughs> so here's the problem, because we canceled the select board training, people were expecting that to be last the hour. And so we have a public hearing at 715 anyways. So I know I, I left a message for Courtney Boudreau, to, so I think she may be coming tonight. So I don't want to. Um, were we expecting Robert Hagopian? Tracy. No, no, maybe we can do that one. So I'll entertain a um, motion to assign, um, to appoint, rather, uh, Robert Hagopian as the police department chaplain. Second. No, who moved it? Not me. No, Jay, I moved it and I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. It doesn't matter. So, I just, I just had a couple questions. Yeah. Go. Okay. Um, um, isn't the um, chief secretary also a chaplain? She is, yes. Okay, so this is the second one? This is yeah. an associate, yeah. Okay. Did and he, they'll he, both remain. Yep. Okay, and he's already a police officer? He's not? Is he an officer? No, he's a, a minister. He's, a he's, minister. he's been our chaplain for many years. For a years. long time. Yeah. And he used to be the minister in Rowley, the Rowley Church for many, many, mm -hmm. many years. Okay. So. And is he part of our police force? No. No, he's just a chaplain. He's no, just, no. A chaplain. Okay. Yep, just a chaplain. Okay. Yeah, just a chaplain. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I think he's, is he fire department too, Tracy? Yes. Yeah. So he's, he's chaplain part for of the, our town. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? No. Okay. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so like I said, Courtney, I left a message. I was kind of expecting her tonight, so I think we'll wait before we do that. 
do that one. Um, and then I can move on to the town administrative report. Sure. Um, let's see. So uh, you may have noticed MVPC placed uh, counters on Larkin Road. Uh, this was a, a little while ago near the Parker River Bridge and north of Millstone Lane and also on Central Street and one on each side of Larkin. They collected volume speed and vehicle classification information. That data will be used in our heavy truck exclusion application and they're going to be coming back, I'm not sure when, but once the roads reopen to gather additional data. Uh, we have um, applied for a couple of grants, haven't received notification that they've been approved yet, but just wanted to put them on your radar. Before uh, Dick Passeri retired from the Board of Library Trustees, he worked really hard on getting electric charging stations there. Um, we have some preliminary approvals and have submitted some grant applications. We're still waiting to hear back, but it looks like that may be moving forward. Uh, we also submitted an Eastern Federal Lands Access Grant. The FLAP grant. The FLAP grant. You want to <laughs> talk about that a little bit, Martha? Sure. So this was actually done in conjunction with Newburyport. They were the ones who submitted the grant, but it came out of some discussions between Mayor Reardon and um, Matt uh, Hillman at, um, at uh, Fish and Wildlife at the Refuge. Uh, looking at improvements, raising the, the Plum Island Turnpike to maintain access out to the island and to the refuge. So I'm not quite sure. The, the grant was actually submitted a while back. I can't remember now exactly when it was. Um, it was pre-COVID, I think, wasn't it? No, no. No, no. no this was very recent. It's in the last couple of months. July. Yeah. What was the focus of the grant? Um, looking at raising No, no. To look at engineering, to look at the to basically doing a, fe a feasible planning study, study, planning. Study. planning so that's grant. the same thing <laughs> they've been trying to do in Ipswich for the oh, last Argyla fifteen Road. years. <laughs> Road. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty yeah. yeah, similar. And they're also looking at doing improvements that would um, improve pedestrian and bicycle access out there. Yeah. So, when you say raising, you mean the level, not. Destroying it. Right, uh, right yes, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, raising the level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Part of part, we were you gonna explain some of the hang ups or you want me to just throw this uh -oh. in? Were you gonna <laughs> part of part of the complications <laughs> of going forward with part of this is to raise something you create that shoulder mm -hmm. that displaces mm -hmm. some of the marshland and that seems to be what's making it hard for us to do that. And Obviously, when you raise things, it creates somewhat of a restriction for tidal flow. That's pretty much a restriction for tidal flow anyway. Mm -hmm. And you certainly have to have people access their home. So I think the idea to be able to move forward and get some one step, two steps ahead of the whole process for getting a grant is outstanding. Because it's really, it's an arduous process. Right. It, it is, and it's going to be very complicated yeah. to, to look at for all the reasons that you mentioned. Yeah. And I, John Eric White, the um, Newbury Ports engineer, has looked at it and identified low points, and I think, you know, one approach would be to do it in kind of a phased, phased approach, but the study should really... And we never sunk out. the um, water and sewer at Plumbush Creek, did we? It kept going straight. We didn't put a dip in it so that we could open up that creek. Yeah, I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so, but this also ties in. Oh, sorry. No, just and the purpose of this is is for flooding. Yes. To prevent yes. flooding yeah. because, right. of, and is that because of the rising sea level or just a basic flooding? All those things. All, all of the above. <laughs> and it, it ties in directly with the municipal vulnerability study that we did in. in uh, 20 and 21. Yep, <laughs> no, I know. It's, it's actually really only two places on that turnpike that are really vulnerable to it now, right? By the refuge and as you enter Plum Island. Right, right at that intersection right. at Otherwise, Sunset and Old Point. It, I don't think I can remember going under for the center. 15 years. Well, the center is a little different. Mm -hmm. How are you going to raise that? <laughs> We're not raising that. Yeah. So. <laughs> but it might look like Holland down there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have a yeah. king tide, doesn't it? Sometime, doesn't that 
Washed but it over goes over in a couple, couple of places. It usually doesn't cover the whole turnpike. No, it doesn't cover the whole turnpike, but looking at the, um, the mapping that um, Ellie Baker did as we were going through the study, as you, as you go forward, you know, 2030, 2050, 2070, mm. um, you know, more and more of the turnpike will be covered at, you know, um, yeah. during high tide, just normal, normal high tides. Unless we go backwards for some reason, which would be nice. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. You're welcome. Um, Martha, thank you. Thank you, Martha. Senator Tarr's office notified us that um, the economic bond bill did include $50,000 for Newbury's Main Street Bridge railing project and $333,000 for the Larkin Dam removal project. Oh, fabulous. So once again, we're always grateful so for his lowers, efforts on our behalf. That lowers the price for us. Yes. Exposure. Yes. Yep. yep. Um, the Merrimack River dredge project contract was awarded. Uh, I think the work has begun. Jeff, yeah. I know you had an MRB meeting. Well, at the MRBA meeting, we did speak about this, and sometimes I think it takes time to get these things going, but I was surprised. I was doing some work on the marsh at the Salisbury Reservation parking lot, and I saw the um, core boat go out, that big aluminum boat with the two motors, and they're doing the symmetry already because they had the RK2 satellite. They were doing all the depths and rip ups and downs and trying to get the elevations of where they have to really dredge. So that's pretty good. So they really, I mean, I think they'd like to get some of it as much done as they can, as quick as they can with the deadline starts or the beginning starts before the deadline ends because it can get pretty rough at the mouth of that river. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so they're going to have a little dredge through the nine foot channel mm -hmm. which is further mm -hmm. up beyond the toothpick several places almost up to the Gillis Bridge but maybe ending at the sewer treatment plant. They're going to, there's three or four high spots they're going to shave those off and then for the 12-foot channel, which is really from the toothpick down, Butler's toothpick, they're going to have a really big dredge because of the seas and the winter seas in the mouth of the river. So it's going to be a complex project. It'll be kind of interesting. And I think as you all have read, is it, I hope it's, I, I'm not going to say the cubic yards because I get it wrong, but they're going to put a significant amount of sand on reservation terrace to offset the erosion that's right. been going on there. We happen to have an erosion cycle that's occurring there that does get created when the jetties are rebuilt. And hopefully this will stop it for long enough for the reset to occur, which has in past years. And then it kind of levels itself out again and returns to normal. So that's kind of a thumb thumbnail. I'm curious about, I don't know. <laughs> Is there any cables that are laid under that river? I'm assuming Well, that all that stuff is, they take everything into account. Okay. They, so they've got that totally, yet they call the marine dig safe. Yeah, they do, they <laughs> no, must. No, okay. they, they, they've they got, go they've find got them. all kinds of records from, from whenever. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, National Grid, we've received notification from them that we can expect a significant increase in our utility bills oh, for like our everybody municipality. Else. Um, I'm preparing a reserve fund transfer for the finance committee for their action because we're, I mean, we're, they're estimating between 50 and 62 percent increase, so it's it's significant. And oh, Tracy, yes. did they say because they're going to gouge us because we're a municipality, or is it, are we uh, going to expect? I think that's pretty consistent. I, I think so. We're going to expect that too. Are going to, I don't know that it will be quite as significant, but I think you can expect to see, you know, um, a doubling of your. Utility costs. Can't, can't double. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> double, yeah. 75 percent. Oh, my. Right. Um, and increase. along that line, more good Has news. To. Our road salt bid came in, and it's about $18 more a ton. So we're looking, if we based it on, you know, last year's um, tonnage, we're looking at about another $30,000. The good news there is that we can run a deficit in our um, snow removal account. Bad news is we do have to fund that deficit at the end of the year. So, uh, you know, again, if it was a similar winter as last year, we'll probably be looking at a deficit in that account as well. So the Finance Committee is aware of it. 
Um, okay. I'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm. Also wanted to let you know we're having a household hazardous waste day sponsored by the Board of Health. It's going to be on Saturday, October 15th from 9 to 1 at the Newbury Elementary School um, on Hanover Street. They're accepting oil-based paints, no latex paints at all, varnishes, pesticides, pool chemicals, gasoline, and other household ke uh, chemicals. The cost to the residents is being subsidized by the Board of Health. Um, it's $25 for up to 10 gallons or 10 pounds and $40 for up to 25 gallons. Non-residents are welcome to attend. They're welcome to come from 12 to 1 and they will pay the full $60 fee. Um, you're able to prepay at the Board of Health. Anybody wants to, they'll give you a, a, a coupon. Um, and their offices are open Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 12 to 4, and Tuesdays from 12 to 7. That's October 15th? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, I've also accepted resignations from both the animal control officer, effective mm. October 16th, and the shellfish constable, effective uh, 925, September 25th. I'm currently working with the department manager on restructuring that whole function and we'll be advertising the position soon. The Pearson field work, that project is complete. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to look at it. Oasis did a really great job. Um, I know James was very happy with their work. So, And finally, just a reminder that the COA open house is going to be October 18th from 2 to 6. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have some correspondence. We have MBTA fall schedule for the bus service. Is, um, the MBTA continues its aggressive hiring campaign for bus operators. Well, let me go back. The MBTA today, uh, this is uh, dated August 24th. The MBTA today issued its fall 22 bus service schedules taking effect on August 28th. Uh, the MBTA typically adjusts service schedules quarterly to reflect on the levels of service being de delivered. A full listing of all upcoming service changes can visit be seen at mbta.com backslash service changes. So they're um, continuing its aggressive hiring campaign for its bus operation, hiring outreach, you know, trying to increase um, uh, rec recruiting new bus drivers. Uh, they are having hiring difficulties, as are everyone else. Um, riders can visit, M again, mbta.com backslash service changes for more information. That's the MBTA. And then we also received the annual operational report from uh, Whittier Regional Vocational Technical High School. Um, Whittier has uh, offers 23 vocational technical career areas. That's wild. Yeah. I mean, but it has um, the the enrollment for the evening school from Newbury is two people. Mm -hmm. And then the day school enrollment is 16. Uh, in 2022, we had six graduates. And the cost to Newberry for the school year is uh, for 21, 2021 to 2022 was $318,332. So that's, mm -hmm. that's that. And then we do have, uh, I have some meeting updates. I have one. Um, the I attended the MMA fiscal policy committee meeting was today at ten at ten o'clock. They talked about um, the budget, the supplemental budget, and they talked about the surplus that's going back to the taxpayers. So um, the legislature is a little bit um, because they're going to be sending back three billion dollars to the to the taxpayer because of that law back in 1986. Uh, there won't be any additional amendments or anything that going through the 
supplemental budget because it's been agreed to by both the House and the Senate, and in order to change it, it's going to have to go through everything again, so they're not amenable to any dialogue to change anything in that budget. Um, they did discuss uh, potential changes to the Massachusetts School Building Association and the libraries, M, M something LC, um, MSLC, I think it is. Is that what it's called? The MSLC? MVLC, or something like that. And um, those two programs, like for instance, uh, they had a, a city council I mean, or a select board member from Wakefield on the call today, and he was saying that uh, they just built a school and they paid $675 a square foot for construction costs, and the school business. Uh, the school building association reimbursement was $335, so it's not in line with what it's supposed to do. So the MMA is going to get behind changes for the, both of those programs. The, this, the library works similar. Uh, we're lucky we have a new li library, but there are other communities in the Commonwealth that, that don't. So they're going to push to have those two programs updated, which may help us when it comes time to build Triton. Is my hope for it. redo so, Triton, whatever it has to be done to Triton. But doesn't Triton, no matter what the cost, don't they still get to split the cost? They will, but whatever the Massachusetts Building Association is going to reimburse them first. So there's one total cost, then there'll be one total reimbursement from this Commonwealth because we're we have one mm -hmm. school, and then whatever that money is, they'll fundraise, they'll do whatever they can do on their end. Whatever the additional cost will be, which we don't know what that will be, has to be borne by the three different towns. Um, the state, aren't they reimbursing uh, building costs 50% as of well, right that's now? That's what Currently. I just asked for, yeah. for, the, yeah. for the schools. For the yeah. schools, yeah. yeah. Currently. Currently. But the cost was 335 okay. I guess, per square foot. That's what threw me off, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, what, that's what he said today. Okay. So we'll see. It's all, all I know is they're going to be pushing for change. So hopefully they'll change. And then um, you guys have a DCC meeting on Thursday night. I did hear from the chair of the Finance Committee. That's She's six, not able to make it. 630. In Raleigh. Raleigh. In Raleigh. Are you, excuse me. Are you able to access the, the agenda and the documents? Because I wasn't today. I didn't. I have to be honest. I didn't look. I will, though. Okay. Right, they so have a, a board. It's called Board Docs uh, on their website. They post them all there. They should be, and I haven't looked either. They should be in the town website. They should no the school website. Oh, the school the school website. website. Um, what? Just email his assistant in Hammerson. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Forward them to me if you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, have to. Okay. So, anybody else have any meeting updates? Okay. We have approval of meeting minutes. I'll, t I'll entertain a motion to approve the select board meeting minutes of 823. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And approve meeting minutes of 913, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. Are you I'm, gonna I'm abstain? Not, yeah, I'm not, okay. I wasn't there. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I'll come back to the warrants. I see we have the chair of the uh, HR board here, so I'm going to ask Mr. Gleckman to come up and speak to the HR board's discussion of proposed changes to the personnel policy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mark Gleckman, the Riverview Drive, here tonight as chair of the HR board. Nice to see everyone. Uh, for a number of years now, I would guess probably eight or ten at least, uh, every year the town clerk's office sends out memorandum to all employees as well as board committee and commission members talking to the requirements that everyone must fulfill annually or in some cases every other year regarding conflict of interest law code of ethics training as relates to the uh, Mass Ethics Commission, as well as uh, the requirements of the open meeting law. And every year, 
employees, board, commission, and committee members are responsible for following up to uh, do their due diligence, to either take the training uh, or uh, become aware of the language in the law, sign acknowledgments that they have been in receipt of such, and get them back to the town clerk's office, and I think eventually it goes in the employee's personnel uh, file. Personnel file. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've been doing that for a number of years as a best practice, uh, and it's worked very well. What we realized a couple months ago in once again reviewing the personnel policy is that the language in the personnel policy didn't exactly map to the requirements that uh, the town clerk's office sends out every year. Uh, so we undertook a, an effort just to make sure that we cleaned up that language to make it more specific make it clear what the requirements are for each of the three elements, one being conflict of interest, one being code of ethics, and one being open meeting law. There are slight variations uh, to each one of them in terms of what the requirements are. So simply what we did is uh, updated the language. And I think you've got that in your packets, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I did, I thought if anyone wanted it to make it easier if you were concerned about redlining or seeing where the changes, I've, what I've done is created just a copy of the new language. Would anyone like that to make it easier to just see what we've done? Sure. Sure. Thank you. This is, this is the new language on its own. Pretty self-explanatory. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, sir. Careful. And all it does is get a little bit more specific about what every person's responsibility is, be that individual an employee or a, in the case of the uh, open meeting law, the boards, commissions, uh, and um, committees. So I'll just uh, stop there and ask if, if I can answer any questions, if we need any clarification or uh, what we've done. And as we've talked about, I think a number of months ago here, this is the select board's purview. So what we did last night in the HR board meeting is vote on this new language. We agreed that it's the proper language. Uh, over the past week or so, Tracy has put this new language in front of the uh, town council for their approval. Uh, they bought off on it, as, if I'm not mistaken. No edits from them. And so this is strictly an opportunity for the HR board to bring it to the select board, letting you know that we are in agreement that this is the proper language based on those three elements, and we would ask for your vote and approval as well. Thank you, Mark. And uh, once that happens, uh, the HR board will uh, create the new language and pass out the new personnel policy to everyone who requires one. Okay. Okay. So uh, before we move into discussion, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to accept accept the language as submitted by the chair of the HR board. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion. Any questions? Shaya? No, I just want to say um, thank you. It's not exciting work to go through and correct language that, <laughs> that conflicts. It's a labor of love. <laughs> right. But it absolutely needs to be done, and I appreciate that. Yeah. We, we, we worked you know, very hard over the past year to make sure that we cleaned up a lot of language, which we did, and, and you folks approved all that, that new language, so we appreciate that. Uh, every once in a while, you know, if, if you read something 50 times, uh, you know, you just don't see it. Right. And the 51st time, you say, oh, you know. I missed that dot. Yeah, as an example, <laughs> the old language said nothing about the open meeting law, which was a requirement, and it was a little ambiguous as to whether the others were conflict of interest or ethics training or, in fact, both. And in this case, it is both, so. Okay. Jeff, do you have any questions? No. Um, it is every two years, not every one year. It's every two years. Two of them are annual. Yep. One of them is uh, upon a start date and then every other year. Yep. Yep. And that's right from Mass General Law. Yeah. Jerry, do you have any questions? Okay. okay. Thank you, Mark. Like JR says, you know, cleaning up language like this is not easy. You know, we have a lot of bylaws. We should be doing the same, too. <laughs> but time is limited. So 
I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. And there is another section of changes to the dress code policy. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It, just, it wasn't on his handout he just gave us. It's in the packet. Right. Yeah. So, Mark, did you want to speak to the dress code changes? That's okay. Uh, I, th I think I should probably defer to Tracy on that, only in that this was not a change that that uh, emanated from the HR board. In fact, this came from uh, from town administrator's office, yep. and uh, you know we we reviewed it. But I think it's probably best if if Tracy speaks to this one. Okay, yep. happy to. Yep. Thank you. Did did your board vote on it though? Yeah, okay. yeah, we on both. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. So the dress code policy, we did pretty much the same thing. We took a look at it. We added some minor changes. The um, Alex Castro from Mead, Tellerman and Costa asked that we make, um, we add some items to make it more specific. And in addition to this, we're also um, adding some uniform for people when they're out in the field. It became apparent that people weren't always able to identify some of our town employees. So those people like Martha, the building inspector, the conservation agent who are frequently in the field will have um, jerseys with our logo and identify their position and jackets as well. Um, and this was the language change to go along with that. Professional. Yep. I don't, I don't see that. Down the second, on the bottom, for those employees whose job duties are required to perform site visits in addition to working in a town <coughs> office setting, including without limitation, conservation agents, building inspectors, and health agents, their on-site attire may include durable work pants and jeans, every other restriction, oh, in the foregoing, it doesn't say anything about, about identify. No, you. that's not in the policy, I'm just saying we've also, in addition to this policy, we're um, providing them with town issued uniform okay. tops when they're in the field. Thanks yep. for clarifying. Sorry. Thanks, um, Tracy, a jacket and a jersey. Mm -hmm. um, jacket warm enough for yes. winter maybe, but yes. jerseys are a pain in the neck sometimes. Should you think also maybe of, even though it's a bit of a cost, maybe a lightweight vest that have, might have color on it too, and town of Newbury on the back. I know, you know I used to have to wear the neon jacket when I went down in the winter. We we have the high visibility easy. ones that we can put over the just something lightweight. The orange something. ones we have those. Have to put yep. a jersey on this. Yep. You know. Well, are you going to get polo shirts? They're polo shirts for the summer, and then jackets for the winter. So, what's the definition of a polo shirt? I mean, talking to a woman, I can yeah. tell you. Like they have this the, is going to be a deep dive. It's just like a little, <laughs> <laughs> a little collar, you know, has a collar with the shirt. Okay, so it's like yeah. a golf shirt, you mean? Yeah, like yeah, a golf, golf shirt. shirt. Probably had three buttons up. Yep. Yes. Collar, yep. three exactly. Buttons up. Okay, then yeah. go for that. <laughs> so. All right. And along with that, they, they'll they have their badges, their town issued badges, so they're easily identifiable in the field. I think that'll raise the bar, making us look a little bit yep. more professional. I agree. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Is Marshall here yet? Well, we have 10 minutes. Is he here? I've been reaching out. I haven't heard back. Okay. We'll wait for him. And can you take a break if you have to. Oh, you get warrants. You yeah, sign. the warrants. You can. I guess I'll entertain a motion to sign warrants. Yep. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we're going to wait. We have a, a public hearing at 7:15, and we have to discuss the uh, capital improvement Wait, plan. Did I did I miss anything, Julie? I don't think so. I think that. Well, you have that one other appointment, Courtney. If she's Oh yeah, attending. if she comes in. I, we'll see if she comes in. Um, I just 
feel like I, I when I bounce around, I tend to miss something. All right, I know. It's, it's, yep, exactly. All right, let's take let's take a break until seven fifty. Thanks. I'm gonna wait for you. Hi, Peter. We're gonna wait. Motion to open the public hearing for a condemnation of property at 113 Scotland Road. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the Town of Newbury Select Board has a public hearing notice. The Town of Newbury notice of a public hearing. Um, notice is hereby given that the Newbury Select Board will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 27th. 2022 at 7:15 p.m. at Newbury Municipal Offices, 12 Kent Way, Byfield, Mass. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 139, Section 1, to determine whether a structure located on the property of 113 Scotland Road is a burnt, dilapidated, or dangerous building or, or other structure, a nuisance to the neighborhood, or dangerous, and prescribe its disposition, alteration, or regulation as required. Is submitted by me, Alicia Greco, the chair of the Newbury Select Board. It was published in the New Report Daily News September 12th and September 19th. So, uh, the public hearing is open. We have the building inspector tonight to speak to this. Mr. Bennett, could you come up? I'll make this as long story as short as I can. <laughs> but uh, what we had was an unsafe structure, I'm sure. You folks have driven by it a thousand times on Scotland Road. It, it had gotten to the point where it was, um, it was a danger. It, you know, it's a nuisance for kids. It's a danger to the fire department, the, the folks in the fire department. So uh, we decided to have it taken down. So I contacted, I had to do a little bit of Jack Clouseau <laughs> and find out who owned it. But uh, it was the siblings. There was two daughters and a son. The daughters, one was in Seattle, one was in New York City. The son was in Woburn, luckily. I talked to all of them, and I was kind of working through it. But at the same time, we started this. It was sort of parallel tracks. And, and um, this, this is a formal, obviously, through the Mass General Law that would have, at the end of the day, allowed the town to take the property down and and lean the property. It's not a taking or anything. It's just it, it allows the town to take it down. Yeah. But I, I was working with the uh, the son who lives in Woburn, and we kept working on it, working on it, and in. He talked to his sisters and finally decided that, okay, we'll take it down. And I got him in touch with a couple of local contractors. And Ronnie Pierce took it down Friday, so no harm, no foul. Right. So you, we don't have to move on so this, So we right? move. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like to do business yeah. that way. Yeah. <laughs> not my favorite I'm thing. Not a, I'm, so, good. I'm not a... I'm not a... Legal guy, I try to, I try to take care of. Well things. done, thank you yeah. for being, okay. you know, Terrific. diligent you. and, and doing that for us. <laughs> yeah. So thank okay. you, thank you very much. Thank you. So since we have no action, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. <clears throat> motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> okay, done. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Um, okay, so. No. The next uh, order of business is to review and approve the draft capital improvement plan. So we emailed all that to you and there are copies here. Oh, I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, we have the chair of the capital planning committee, um, Marshall Jesperson, with us t tonight, who's going to speak to this. But before before we we get to this, I just want to um, kind of frame this as to what this is. Uh, this is just a planning tool. It's um, it's amended annually. The town co consistently tries to um, address our capital needs. This is just a programming. Uh, layout 
um, pathway that is a best practice to have a capital improvement plan. So on that note, I'm going to hand it over to Marshall. Thank nope. you. Uh, and so I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail, but you're exactly right. This is a planning document. And the, the purpose of the planning document, and the reason we have this, is that we need to identify all of the capital assets that the town has and make a plan for either replacing them, should they wear out, and a lot of things do wear out, uh, or repairing them or enhancing them in, in some way. It gives us a tool to use to know what is coming uh, at us at different years and how to plan for those things, how to fund for them, how to get ready for them. Uh, as you had mentioned, this is a plan. As a plan, it's got some, uh, it's got some monetary numbers in it. Those are monetary numbers that we know for some of the short-term things, and usually some of the smaller ones, police cruisers, things like that, uh, that we do every year. The longer-term plans, the, the, uh, the monetary amount that is in the plan is really a placeholder. It's a it's best guess, but I will guarantee that every one of them is wrong. How far it is wrong is, is not important because when we get closer to the the actual time, then we'll start to utilize people in the planning process to come up with some more uh, rigorous amounts as to what we're going to use. We're also going to see the same thing on, on a lot of the smaller items that we have in here. That we've got uh, we've got some historical figures that. Uh, <coughs> are the placeholders. The Capital Planning Committee spent a good deal of time on this and made a lot of uh, uh, suggestions and corrections. And the most of the corrections were in a, just a, a correction into, do we have the right name, do we have the right uh, thing, in the right titles for some of the things that we are uh, looking at in the plan, the there were three substantive uh, recommendations from the capital planning committee about this plan, and uh, I hope that they will be included. One is that anytime we do roof work, uh, we need to study that to see if we can install and in, with any roof work. Uh, solar panels so that we can uh, be a greener uh, town. There are monies available for green initiatives for the town in the Commonwealth and we would uh, want to be able to take advantage of those. Likewise, we look at uh, the buildings and say everything we can do to be sustainable makes a lot of sense. Vehicles, likewise, uh, when when would it make sense for certain vehicles to go electric rather than internal combustion? And finally, in building, uh, looking at our long-term plans and what we need to do for that, uh, we think that when we get this plan a little more together, and what we will be doing is bringing forward to the board, the concept of uh, a, a fund for capital improvements so that we can level out the uh, burden on the taxpayer rather than doing overrides. And so we can have a capital fund that uh, can be earning income rather than debt which is going to be uh, charged interest. So those are some of the things <clears throat> that we have in the capital plan. As I say, uh, looking at the numbers, they're a, a guide, and probably a pretty good guide, but uh, no one's going to hold us to those numbers. The plan itself outlines things in a, in a calendar, if you will, for the next five years. <clears throat> and I think one of the things that we want to do in the 
Capital Planning Committee is look at all of our large capital structures and <clears throat> what their their real life is going to be and so what is our long-term uh, expenditure in business we would say what is our long-term depreciation for these things on an annual basis so that we can uh, potentially uh, look at that as a, uh, a target <coughs> for funding things in the future that's it in short if you have any questions i'd be happy to entertain them thank you thank you so much so um i just want to explain to the board because i don't know whether you're aware of this but the capital planning that the town of newbury does is a process and it begin and i can have tracy explain um how the process works um i know uh one uh selectman packer is not able to be with us tonight and he had a question he reached out to me earlier today regarding uh, page 21 the total project cost of 14 million dollars for the town hall uh, project when uh, Jeff from context was here and he gave us a, a, a comment about um, a, a potential cost of around 10 million dollars um, we won't know what the actual cost will be until we go out to bid um, but again this was a snapshot in time and um, I'll ask uh, Tracy to go ahead and explain the process please. sure so um, yeah this document was started I think we started work on it Marshall back in November um, of last year we put most of our finishing touches in, on it in April um, and I've still received a couple of comments for changes um, that we've got to add to it particularly on page 14 adding in the um, Larkin Road um, over Wheeler Brook box culvert and um, a couple other minor amendments so those will be added but basically so the the process begins and we this this document provides us with a roadmap for all of the um, for the a way for the town to achieve its capital projects and its plans for the next year so it starts in November we ask all the department managers um, to provide us a listing of what they anticipate their needs are going to be for the next five years in addition to that we all also you'll see there's two parts to this there's the the longer range five-year plan but there's also the annual component so you see the 2023 um, budget items in this document um, it basically identifies in here you'll see what planned resources we're we're hoping to use to fund these projects um, I think it's important to note that this is a living document and it changes constantly you'll read in there um, uh, a request for 300,000 for fiber optic we got a grant for that so we're, what we had thought we would fund with opera or free cash or another funding source is changing so it's it's constantly changing it's constantly up uh, updating being updated but it is indeed a, a, a blueprint for the expenditures we plan to make but this is not an appropriation so I think that that's an important point to make it's it's indeed a, a financial planning tool that that we'll all use over the next year but the um, town hall you mentioned specifically at the time when we were drafting this document those were the numbers that we were looking at subsequent to that um, context came in made a presentation now they're talking about 10 million um, before this project is approved and goes before the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee and eventually you know town meeting that number will likely change a number of times until the project is out to bid you're not going to have an, a final number so in here you'll also see the year that we plan to make that expenditure um, that changes frequently every year when the capital planning committee meets with the town ma the department managers they'll talk about okay you know we had this dump truck scheduled for replacement in 2024 how's it look James well I think we can get another year out so we push it out to 2025 or sometimes the opposite is true we have to accelerate it and we have to bring something 
forward a year or two. Um, so this, I, I mean, I can't stress enough, it's a guide, planning tool, identifies resources, gives us and all of you a warning of what we'll likely be addressing in, in the next five years, but it's, it's continually being updated. And let me ask you this, what mm -hmm. does this do, having this document, what does it do when we do go to bond something? This document is one of the documents that the rating agencies will ask us if we have. Um, it was really important um, for us to have an updated plan the last time when we went out to borrow for the um, police department building. They asked specifically for this, and this was the first, I think it's the second document that we've had that was fully updated. So we were, we were really excited that we had that available, as well as financing financial policies and you'll see in here too all of what's proposed recommended discussed is all consistent with our financial um, management policies of the town great Alicia, thank you Jeff. I think too that um, you know thanks to Tracy and Marshall and his board I mean I think people have to realize this is actually quite a wonderful document it really gives you a lot of insight into town government and everything Newby really is from its roads to its schools to its recreational land to square miles to population figures and what it really takes to keep our town running. It's all in this document and it kind of congeals together to make a fluid document and really like Tracy said, it's documents like this that give us that AAA bond rating because we're prepared. So I just want to thank everyone. Thank you, because I know this isn't easy to go through. Oh, it's a do you have any questions? I do. Yep. I do. Um, yeah. Um, there seems to be a big void when it comes to Triton. Uh, it says Triton will be handled uh, elsewise, uh, you know, uh, separately. Um, how can you possibly plan for five years? Because, I mean, we're going to have to start repairing the high school sooner than later. So. I'm concerned that there's, there's no planning for the high school because that's a pretty big, that's a very big amount. I believe between 10 and 20 million Ashia will be if, if they have to tear down Triton and rebuild. So I, I'm troubled that there's no planning or consideration for what we have to do with Triton. Thank you, schools. Jerry. Ma Marshall, can, can you respond, please? The, the plan itself is a placeholder. And so when we look at 10 and 20 million, we see that it's gonna be a big number. Right. But the, what the function of this document is really to keep that task in front of us, not to give it a number, because the number, you know, we, we could give it a number, it would be wrong. And then somebody else would come up and say, well, you have the wrong number. Yes. But we could choose any number of wrong numbers before we get to the final uh, <clears throat> amount. And in, in a lot of cases, anybody who has done building uh, buildings knows that's also the wrong number. We're, there's a lot to do it. But <clears throat> what we endeavor to do in this document is to identify all of the elements of the plan and as I said before, uh, we could put numbers in there and we try and put a best guess to get into the magnitude of the number, but uh, the number itself is going to change. What is most important is we understand that it's coming, you know, this, this obligation is coming down the pike for whatever the number is and, and uh, lets us plan for the number of things that are going to come down the pike and, and how we're going to deal with them. That one, you're, you're right, uh, we certainly do not have a number for it that's, that's close, but we do have a place for it, and that's what this document is for. I, I guess I don't understand how you can say you have a place for it when it's, when it's not even included, so I'm well, troubled by that. This document actually does have some discussion about our school facilities, in particular the ones that we own, that we are responsible for, that we, we bear the burden of repairing and 
capital asset um, project page, replacements. Page. Uh, on page, I believe it starts on page 15. Okay. Um, with respect to, um, and you'll see in here the the HVAC system of the elementary school, the roof of the elementary school. So, so those are the items that we're solely responsible for are accounted for, and there are um, projected funding sources in this document. In terms of Triton, we're we're a little bit removed from the planning process. They do, we, we don't conduct their planning process. Obviously, the school committee and the administration over there um, is in charge of that. But they do keep us apprised of what's going on. Mm -hmm. I can tell you unequivocally, any project that would be coming out of Triton, no matter how it ends up shaking out, would, would be a debt exclusion override proposal. Um, and would likely be before the, the three towns. The three towns, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you'll be now part of being able to access some of that information with the DCC needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. They have their own capital planning process, and it's becoming more apparent because they're starting to really see what's ahead of them. And the, we've already had several meetings, Alicia. Mm -hmm. So. But you'll be more aware a little bit now because of being able to be in that loop. Okay. So is it is it fair to say that while you, you talk about the numbers that are, are going to be wrong, this is basically your wish list? No, is I wouldn't it? call it a wish I, list. I would not call it a wish list. I would call it a list um, that the department managers put together for what they, the resources that they need to provide their functions of government. Right. The costs for road repairs, bridge repairs, um, vehicle replacements, uh, ladder truck replacements, right. those uh, building repairs. I wouldn't call it a wish list. A lot of work. Well, it's yeah. bas it's basically yeah. what they what they're looking down the road that they have to get, but the numbers don't correlate. The, the numbers, I guess, are the wish list. It's kind of yeah, pick if, a number. If you look on, I, um, I think, pages four and five, it kind of outlines the process that we follow. So when you look at anything, even if you're looking at, at items in your home, capital asset replacements in your home, what you have to repair today, you likely have three quotes for, and you know if the contractor's coming, you, you have all that information available and it, the project's ready to go. When you're looking at, oh, that roof is going to need replacement in about five years. You don't likely have those estimates in your hand at that time. So naturally, the things that are further out, the the estimates are probably not not as good as those things that we're going to work on in an individual year. Now, the process that begins November first, when all the department managers come to the capital planning committee, they will have their form B that lists what they need to replace. Hopefully, we had it planned for in this document, and they'll have their three quotes, mm -hmm. and um, the Capital Planning Committee and the Finance Committee will have all the detailed information they need to review. This document isn't that process. It's, right. it's the, two, the two phases of the process that we're, we'll be working on. So this isn't, this isn't something that, you know, pie in the sky, wish list. This is... Uh, what is well, this needed, is what their needs are. What their but, needs are to yeah. perform the functions of local government. And right, the, right. But, I mean, also, on the other hand, it's like when I read that, you know, they're getting rid of cars that don't have a lot of miles on it, my question is, then why are we getting rid of them? Is it because they're high maintenance or, you know? Could be various mm -hmm. reasons. Yeah. One, yeah, one we escalated because it was... Oh, I'm sorry, Marshall, one second. I remember one we escalated because it had electrical issues and it would have been more expensive well, to fix and it. And also, which makes this a good document, is with what's going on with COVID and pot shortages like trucks not getting the things they need to even get off the, um, the, you know, where they built line, that machine became available and that's why we were able to move for it. Otherwise, there won't be machine. another one built right. for three years. Right. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Marshall, can you speak to that? Well, one of the things that uh, we have to look at is this is the list of things that we're going to consider. Uh, the fact that we do consider them, and I think one of the, one of the things, Jerry, what are you specifically talking about? 
Well, the, the um, animal control officer, it specifically states it doesn't have a lot of miles on it, but it's, uh, I guess it's, it's obsolete, or it's, um, yeah, it, it doesn't, it's an old car, but it doesn't have a lot of miles. I've got an old car, it doesn't have a lot of miles, it's 12 years old, I still drive it, I wouldn't get rid of it. I mean, I mean, is, is, is there, when does it get considered whether or not it's a wise decision to get rid of something that just because it's, you know, three years, five years, X amount of time, but it's not rusted, it's not breaking down. When do those things get put into the equation just to see if we get rid of that vehicle or not? Or does it? Thank, thank you uh, for asking that question, and it is a very good question. This document sort of sets things up as to what we can expect in the future. What you're talking about is a specific vehicle, and specific vehicles as they come up from time to time uh, before the Capital Planning Committee, would, we would ask that question. Why are we getting rid of this one? Where is it going to go? What's its trade-in value? Um, so we look to the people who operate in these departments to make the case for uh, something that, as you point out, could be aberrant and uh, you might think it's getting done too early. But it's not something that we would even look at in this document. This document's more of a planning document, not an execution document. That comes with what Tracy had talked about, the Form Bs, and uh, the people from the departments actually come and meet with us at 7 o'clock in the morning and give us the story as to why or why not uh, things are happening. Now we've had we've had people come in and have things that have, are going to go a year or two longer than their replacement date. That's good for us. Sometimes we have some things that go much shorter and we question that rigorously to find out why in fact we should spend money on something that we think would have uh, a longer life. At times, what we have found is that while it could have a longer life, there are some issues about it that it doesn't serve its function particularly well, and a newer vehicle with some different uh, characteristics would fit that function better. But those are things that are really down in the weeds, and we, we work through those with the staff on uh, in a uh, a real situation on a real-time basis when they come up, which is going to come up every year. Now, I have a question for you, Jerry. You mentioned a wish list, mm. and what do you mean by a wish list? It's something you would you would you would like to have, and you you would wish that you could have it. You know, um, without consideration of the taxpayer who has to who has to pay for it. That, to me, is a wish list in a. In a Okay. okay. Let, let, let me, uh, let me uh, say that every one of the capital items that is in, that, that comes forward to us has the justification written for it. And there's a great deal of process that goes into that. And uh, when I can't remember some, someone coming up with something that was we looked at and said, well, that's really superfluous. You know, I'm, we looked at uh, some of the stuff that came up, for instance, with the fire department, and we said, well, why is that coming up? Well, it had it, it had its life expectancy done, and we couldn't get used, we couldn't get parts for it. So we look at it very carefully. And actually, Marshall, I, I, also, I also want to be clear that that in 2007, and if you go on the website, you'll see this, in the spring town meeting of 2007, um, town meeting passed a bylaw instructing the town of Newbury to create the capital planning committee, to create a capital plan, specifically to plan this. So this is something that, that town meeting sees the meaningfulness in it um, and was smart enough, I feel, to um, pass 
a bylaw. So we need to have a capital plan. It's, it's directed in our, in our bylaws. It's good fiscal policy. It's sound fiscal policy. Um, and it helps us in the, long, in the long run. It's one of the reasons why we're a triple A rated community. It's also funny too because we might only be 26.7 square miles, which doesn't add up a lot of times to a lot of mileage. Mm -hmm. But for ambulances and certain trucks and police vehicles, there could be 150, 200,000 miles on the motor mm -hmm. because they sit and they, they have to idle to be ready and all that yeah. stuff. And that's when repair happens that it's just something that these department managers understand you and I don't. So. But I have a question, Marshall, regarding Triton. Um, when and if it gets to that point that, we, that they do have um, a number and they plan to go um, the, the communities Triton will plan to go to have a community. That still would not be part of this capital improvement plan, would it? Because it's a district-owned building. That's correct. Okay. The the um, the administration does come to the capital planning committee and the finance committee, and they do do detailed presentations to. Um, make sure we have all the information that we need and just not to beat a dead horse but j again this isn't an appropriation request so to to Jerry's point you know M Marshall the, and the capital planning committee they go through detailed review and then it also goes to the finance committee for review ultimately the select board for inclusion on a warrant before it would ultimately go to town meeting, this the, uh, vote to approve this document doesn't approve any of these individual form Bs that you see presented here. No, it's it just still the plan. has to go. Yep. Any further questions? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the capital improvement plan as submitted by the capital planning committee. So moved. Second. Did I already move that? No, I don't. No, you did. You just had Marshall speak. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you for your time, Marshall. Thanks, Marshall. Pleasure. I just want to add one thing, and, and it was mentioned before. This is a document that is a plan, and as such, we will be changing it from time to time, correcting it, making additions or deletions as, as we see necessary. But this is uh, going to be the, the basis for that going forward. And, uh, thank you very much for it. Thanks thank for you. Thank you. Thank you. And, thank you. Thanks. Um, before we move to adjourn, there is one other thing I wanted to mention is that the uh, Massachusetts Select Board Association is having a webinar, Trends in Municipal Charter Changes. If anyone is interested in going, it's Friday, October 14th from noon uh, to 1 p.m. It's a free webinar. Just email Julie and she can get you registered. You need to appoint Courtney. Oh, oh, we have Courtney. Now, do we want, she had mentioned that she might want to come. Do we want to wait to appoint her to our next meeting or what do you think we should do? Do we usually, don't they usually come? No. Well, I had mentioned to her, I don't, and she sent I mean, I usually have a conversation. She mm -hmm. sent an email. Yeah, she had just sent an email. Requesting on that she yeah, wanted to be appointed. And then I reached out to her, and I think, I think we're going to pass on this. I just want to make sure that she she has an opportunity to come. Okay. So we'll get a hold of her again. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to reach yeah. her again. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Okay. Uh, motion to motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.